praise God. Welcome, everybody. Uh, appreciate your patience there. We are here as watchmen on the wall. We are here for Zion's sake. We will not hold our peace until Jerusalem, for Jerusalem's sake, and we will not rest until her, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness. It is the city of God. It is the city of peace. That is what we're praying into. We are we are praying to for the finish line. And that's where we are. And so we just rejoice in the Lord today. And Father, we look unto you to aid and assist us in all that we say and all that we do. We thank you that you're mindful of the things that are going on that and that you are our aid and our helper. We intercede, we join with Jesus, our intercessor, regarding the plans and the purposes of his uh, a plan, a agenda and not our own. So we say, here we are. We submit unto you and we give you thanksgiving and praise for your aid and assistance today. Well, praise God, praise God. Much is going on as uh, you know that... <clears throat> Israel uh, uh, is, uh, as far as in a continual state of war, they have taken out uh, Hezbollah uh, as far as their leadership is concerned, uh, even though Hezbollah still probably has over 100,000 missiles that has been supplied to them over the years by Iran. And so... Um, uh, Nezrallah, which is the head of uh, Hezbollah, was taken out. Uh, I think uh, it was been it's been a week over a week ago, and then uh, in Iran, when uh, or excuse me, in 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 Beirut, which was under underground uh, uh, with a big huge building on top of him, and it was like their command center. And while Benjamin Netanyahu was in. Uh, New York at the UN speaking to the UN he gave the go ahead to take him out because they knew where he was and that alone was you know uh, phenomenal so they knew his whereabouts his movement etc they had been tracing him actually had enabled him uh, uh, them to trace him over a month they knew where he was when he was it, it, all the details and so they took him out, and again, it's like decapitating the top of the snake. You know, it's not really, the others will not be effective. So evidently, this has been um, the strategy that God has given the IDF and the leadership of Israel, and that is amazing. But here, they have taken out their rank and, you know, file of leadership in Hamas. They have t uh, taken, well, out uh, Hezbollah. But as far as Hamas, the top leader is the only one that is left. He is not communicating uh, with, uh, you know, pagers, phones, etc. because of the pager or the uh, episode. Uh, they took out really thousands of their leadership because they communicated with pagers rather than than phones. And then they went to walkie-talkies, and then those exploded. So again, it is amazing the strategies that God has given uh, the IDF and their leadership. So these are the things that we have been praying into, wisdom um, strategies from, in other words, there's uh, the scriptures talk about two different knowledge, a natural knowledge, and then there's a higher knowledge. It's God. It's a higher wisdom. And so here we are, and and uh, they have uh, the, uh, uh, been investigating. Iran has been investigating where there must be a spy in the camp that is giving Israel these, you know, uh, uh, information that has allowed them to take out. And they are really, to me, the Ayatollah, they've taken him underground, uh, which is the leadership. He spoke the other day at uh, the death uh, or the ceremony acknowledging Nasrallah for the first time, I think, since uh, it's been s uh, several years, four or five years, that he's he's been seen in public. But after that, they took him back underground. 
So, so, but what they think they've uh, been doing is thinking that there is possibly, uh, you know, a spy in their own camp, which they have been interrogating their top, um, uh, the Revolutionary Guard, which is the, the Secret Service or the, uh, you know, next to the Ayatollah, the the Supreme, uh, or the SEAL team, so to speak, or the hierarchy of the the. Uh, Iran's leadership. And so the, one of the top generals, they started investigating him. I mean, he was the top Iranian general. And they are thinking that he is the spy that was spying for Israel. And during the interrogation, he had a heart attack. And they, they, think, that he's, I, they think he's dead. They probably killed him. I don't know. But anyway, um, that is what's going on in Iran. And this morning, I was, you know, I was reading over in Proverbs, and it says, uh, guilty criminals experience paranoia. I think in the uh, the uh, King James, etc. The wicked flee when nobody pursues. But we know that Israel is in hot pursuit of these men uh, that are, demonized with this hatred from hell itself. And it is demon spirits that Israel is dealing with. It is a war against evil and uh, God and Satan's forces. And so uh, the, the, the word of God continues and says, but the innocent lovers of God, because of righteousness, have, will have boldness of a young and a ferocious lion. But a, a, a rebellious nation is thrown into chaos. But leaders anointed with wisdom will restore law and order. And so this is really, in essence, as I, as I read this this morning, I immediately ran up my, opened up my Bible to the uh, Jeremiah 49, where God himself says that he will judge Elam, which is the old word for Persia, or it is, and, and today we name it, uh, or has it's been named in uh, this century as Iran. And God says, he says, uh, he told Jeremiah, the prophet, now here, this was prophesied of over, you know, 2,600 years ago because uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel were contemporaries. I think Jeremiah was a little bit older, but I'm, I'm not sure on that one. But anyway, he says in Jeremiah, the word of the Lord, for chapter 49, verse 34, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam. Now, uh, that is Iran. Now, it, God says he's going to do it. Now, and he, we know that he uses humanity, and he's going to use the idea. We go back over to Ezekiel 37, and when uh, God showed Ezekiel these valley of dry bones, and that they were scattered across, you know, and this was a picture of Israel, really, um, you know, after the Holocaust, because uh, there, there were, they were a, a nation that was desecrated. They were, um, you know, even though uh, they had no land, they were dispersed from their land and they were being killed across the earth. And God shows Ezekiel these valley of dry bones and it was a, a valley, a desert. They'd been out there bleaching in the sun for a long, long time. And, 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 and the Spirit of God you know, you know, uh, you know, said, what do you see? And, and Ezekiel showed, said to the Lord, you know, dry bones. And then he said, prophesy to those dry bones. And the four winds went and put, uh, came and the bones came together. And we know that old song. I can hear Bob Rand singing it now. And it's just, you know, those, those, those bones coming together and the flesh coming on it. And, and then they stand upright, but there's no breath in them. And so God breathed into them. And, and, and he said, can these bones live? And he said, Lord, you know. 
and he said prophesy and when he prophesied the winds the the ruah the breath of god entered into them and they became it says a great host a great army and that is what i ran this spirit that is controlling Iran today is dealing with the breath and the army of God. And they are singing God's word. They are, you know, and, and many of them are believers in Yeshua. And many of them are standing up and many still are in religion. But God's at work in the midst of them. But God says, and there was a phone call between Biden and uh, Benjamin, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu the other night. It wasn't last night, it was the night before, where Biden started cussing at Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. You can't go after their oil supply. You can't go after their nuclear. You know, uh, and, and he just, you know, he's, he said, and what's, what you have to do a, 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 an equal response. Well, the equal response is nobody was hurt in Israel because God ha, has a covering over Israel. It's, it, you know, they're dealing and fighting with God and Biden is siding with the enemy because it's the oil money that is feeding their 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 terrorist proxies and giving them a paycheck and and shipping them armament but the idf the uh, that army that god breathed in is he is he has raised them up and this is what the spirit of god says he says i'll break the bow so our prayer today is to pray into this word God says, behold, I'll break the bow of Elam. What is a bow? A bow is that which shoots the arrow. Now, we know that they shot 400 missiles. Uh, you know, these are guided missiles. And just like your GPS sometimes, those, you know, it sort of leads you the wrong way. Well, it looked like God and a lot of prayers dealt with those those GPS systems on those things because they didn't hit their target. And so, and oftentimes in the realm of the spirit, I am I am not a flake, but I, I it's like I, I tamper with them in my prayer, in my tongues. I tamper with those GPS systems. And it's like, uh, you know, God's at work in the midst of this. But Biden is saying, you know, in other words, there was nobody hurt, so you can shoot your missiles, but don't hurt anybody. That's a bunch of bunk, uh, you know. Anyway, but God says that he will break the bow of Elam. That which shoots the missiles, those, those uh, missile silos, those, uh, those nuclear places that has got those, uh, the bow, so to speak. He says, I will break the bow of Elam. So, Father, we thank you that you watch over your... A word, you said the foremost might of 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 their power, their power, which is nuclear, and in this hour, and there may be others, but you know, Father, that which is oh, it's it's naked to your eyes, and against Elam you will bring the four winds, that is the ruah, the the wind of God. We are in the Hebrew year just. A few days ago, we entered into 5785. It's the year, the five is grace, and it is, um, it is, it is grace. It begins with grace. It's going to end with grace. God's ability on natural men that are godly. And pay, the, the eight, the decade of the eighties is the pay, the mouth. And that is a sound, and that is and 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 five. The the Hebrew word is hey, which is breath or wind, and so God is saying to us in this prophetic year that as you speak my word, my breath. See that that is what entered in unto you when we receive the Holy Spirit. The, the Roa Kadesh, the, the breath of God, when we became a living spirit, 
in the in the realm of the spirit we we when we were slapped on our butt from our mother's womb by that doctor and we went hey <sighs> in other words we breathed in that was the breath of almighty god and just like abraham and sarah you know abraham it was abram abram which you know at, at 85 years old god said changed his name to abram and he put that hey in that and the and the uh, end of his name there and he became the father of many nations in other words god's grace his breath his wind on that natural man and that is exactly what happened in in ezekiel 37 he said prophesy to the wind the ruach kodesh violent uh, in other words inhale imparting courage and strength and uh, uh, like never before and re, uh, uh, releasing the prophetic sound of God a warlike energy and that is exactly what we're doing in our prayers releasing energy and life in the roa kadesh is the fire and the wind of God on us just like on the uh, uh, in Acts 2. And so we are here and it is time for God's word to go across the seas from this nation unto the nations of the earth like never before. And so though it's turbulence times, we can keep our eyes on Jesus who steals the the the, the winds and the wave. But he back to Jeremiah 49. He says, Behold, I'll break that bow and the foremost of their might or their power. Against Elam, I'll bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and scatter them toward the winds. And, and there will be not be one nation. They, they will not uh, uh, be outcast. Uh, they will not go to. In other words, what would do that? A nuclear blast. And our administration has said, don't do that. But God says he's going to do it. So we know. Now this Saturday is Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. It's the High Holy Day. Most Jews, even if they're secular, is going to be in a synagogue, etc. That's the reason why Israel's enemies even attacked them in 1972 on Yom Kippur. So here we are. And God is up to something and we are loosing his breath on these things. And he says, and I will cause Islam to be dismayed before their enemies. And before those who seek their life, I'll bring disaster upon them with my fierce anger, saith the Lord. And I will send the sword after them until they're consumed and I'll set my throne there. Oh, on the other side of the mountain, it's like uh, they say that the greatest revival on the earth is there. Uh, uh, in uh, uh, Iran because the people are tired of the oppression of hell, of the enemy, of the Ayatollahs, this anti-God, anti-woman. That's another story, but Jesus is the great liberator of women. And he says, in my fierce anger, but he says, I will destroy from them their kings and their princesses. This has been Israel's MO. Their method of operation, take out the leadership. If they take out the leadership of Iran, and we call forth your wisdom, Father, whether they, whether this, uh, this uh, Iranian uh, high general was the spy or not. We say that you're the spy in the camp and you know what they're doing. And we call it exposed to your men and women and that which you desire to do. That supernaturally, we call for your wisdom upon the IDF and upon uh, 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 Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in that war cabinet in the name of Yeshua. We cry, Father. We cry for your wisdom. You said a rebellious nation is thrown into chaos, but leaders anointed with wisdom will restore, restore law and order. We call anointed leaders in Israel with your wisdom to restore that nation Restore, we call restoration to the nation of Israel, to the people of Israel, to the economy of Israel. And we thank you for it, for anointed leaders that know, understand the times, 
They understand the scriptures and they hear your voice and they are led by your spirit. We thank you for those that will yield to you. If you're in agreement with that, just say out loud, not right now. Amen. Amen. I'm in agreement. And those that are oppressed, we thank you, Father, that your word says that you'll take them out. You'll take them out. You'll destroy their kings, their ayatollahs, their leaders. And it will come to pass, you said, in the latter days, and you'll bring back the captives of Elam. So we thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. We give you praise and thanksgiving this day. We thank you that you are a man that you should not lie. We thank you for the Ruah Kodesh, the breath of God upon your people, that the, the righteous are bold as a lion. And we thank you that this day we prophesy, we prophesy every negative death-dealing word that's ever been spoken over Israel. We say that it falls to the ground and beneath their feet, every spirit of witchcraft, every decree of the enemy beneath their feet, and that your word runs swiftly to accomplish that which you desire. And no man or demon can hinder it. According to Job 42.2, no longer can the word of God and the presence of God be hindered in any shape, form, or fashion or thwarted in any shape, form, or fashion. We thank you, Father. We praise you. 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 Glory, glory, glory. You know, a scripture just... Uh, popped into my mind. I want you to, uh, put, if you've got an Amplified Bible, pull it out and read it too. Over in the book of Job, we've often, we've quoted, quoted this, I've quoted it, and uh, much, but then um, it's like, uh, that's Psalms, no wonder I can't find it. It's Job 22. And so, uh, but you know, oftentimes we just read the first part of it and we don't see the rest of it. But I love this. It says in Job twenty two twenty eight, and uh, it says, For you shall decide and decree a thing and it shall be established. Oftentimes we've... But in other words, uh, James says, The tongue is our rudder. And in other words, we need to... Uh, if, if we're going some, you know, a ship on a sea and we are on the sea of life and... And, and and wherever we're going, that rudder has got to be turned the right way. And as we, he said, our tongue is a rudder. And you, it says, you, you decree a thing and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. In other words, the light of God will shine upon your ways. In other words, if you'll speak God's word and we call that I, the leadership of IDF, the leadership of Israel, we thank you, Father, that they will decide and decree a thing that is aligned with your word, and it shall be established, and light, revelation, will shine upon their ways. You will show them how it would be accomplished. We say that according to your word, that... You will take out uh, Iran's might and power. And you will take the le wicked leadership and pluck them up and set your people free in Iran. So we thank you for light coming to the leadership of Israel, showing them which way to go, how to do it. Every plot, plan, that they have investigated, you will highlight, you will emphasize upon them, this is the way to go to accomplish your will. So we thank you for it, Father. And not only in Israel, but we call that in our life. We prophesy to our lives that we understand the time, contend for the faith, and our genuine watchmen on the wall, that we're living in a time of revelation and light, because you are living big in us. So we thank you that even so, there may be political storms, there might be storms, you know, but we thank you that we are aligned with you. We are courageous and we stay on course, accomplishing your word no matter what. So we thank you for it. We praise you for it. We contend 
for the things of the spirit of the living God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we praise you and thank you for it, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now cause your face to shine upon these laborers, these prayer warriors that have agreed and aligned with you in every aspect of their life. We thank you for your favor, your favor, surrounding them, their families. We thank you for every need being met, spirit, soul, body, socially, financially. We thank you that they are a lighthouse, a source of light for others as well as for themselves and their surrounding sphere. We praise you and thank you for it in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. Do you agree with that? Say out, amen out loud. Praise God, praise God, praise God.